But back to the protein thing for a second. So you mentioned higher protein being good because a lot of people don't get enough. And and especially as you get older, you kind of need more protein. Um, So how do you kind of think about or approach or advise other people in terms of how to kind of uh, uh, get enough protein on a ketogenic diet or or even not on a ketogenic diet? And it can be tricky, particularly um, people that are fasting. And so that becomes another whole challenge, right? If you, uh, if you have a very short eating window, uh, it's certainly possible, but you still need to fit a sufficient daily allocation of program, of protein into that window. It's less important. You know, there used to be talk about a thing called the anabolic window and there is an anabolic window, but it's much bigger than we ever thought. So it used to be, you know, you'd see the guys in the gym and they had their, you know, they didn't get to the parking lot before they drank their whey protein because they thought for sure all their exercise was in vain if they didn't immediately have a giant bolus of protein. So that's been disproven. But it is true that some period relatively close to exercise would be a good time to have a high protein meal. But it's not as time critical as people used to think. But when somebody is not eating for most of the day, then you have to really be thoughtful about how you'll fit enough protein into your window. So I often do intermittent fasting, but I have to be thinking about how, how will I do this? You mm-hmm. know? And, uh, so, you know, so I live in Florida most of the year, half the year and the rest of the time in Wyoming. And in Wyoming, we have a tremendous amount of just fabulous, high quality grass fed meats and wild game. So in Wyoming, it's easy to get spectacular uh, meats of all kinds, very natural. In Florida, of course, we have great seafood. And um, I like to uh, devour both of those in large quantities, uh, coupled with green leafy, you know, green veggies like uh, spinach. You know, Popeye ate spinach. Remember Popeye? He was probably keto and he ate spinach. Popeye was good. (laughs) <laughs> made him strong. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, like the, the different meats and seafood and things like that, um, can be some good protein sources. Now you mentioned like the intermittent fasting eating window kind of thing. That's a good point. So, you know, 16, eight is a popular schedule. And so obviously if you have like an eight hour window, you could, the way I would think of it is like it get something high, a high protein meal at the beginning and the end of that eight hour window, basically, and yeah. then kind of look at how much total protein you're taking in, make sure it's pretty reasonable as well. So that's exactly and, right. Yeah. But if you think about it, uh, let's say a person weighs 180 pounds mm-hmm. and even given the, the recommendation that I gave, which is double RDA, uh, and many recommend more than that, but I think double RDA is sensible. That's somewhere between 131 and 160 grams of protein. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you're doing 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight a day, that's about 130, 131 grams of protein. That's at the low end. Mm-hmm. So if you think about 131 grams of protein and that's at the low end over eight hours, most people do not achieve that. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. I've kind of kind of come to realize that more uh, recently. Um, and so I've I've really been like paying attention to like well, okay. At the beginning of my eating window, I'm going to have high protein and at least one more time in the day and to definitely get over a hundred grams most days and often closer to like 150 or something like that to kind of get in that ballpark range. Um, now speaking of protein though, uh, you know, there's, you know, there's all the natural sources, meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy, um, and then some, you know, like vegetable sources and things that are not quite as complete or bioavailable. Um, but you can still get some from there. And then what is your opinion on, this is kind of my personal curiosity, but I'm sure some listener might want to know as well. Um, there's a lot of like protein shakes, protein powders, protein, this and that. And if, and one of the most common would be maybe the whey protein. Um, so what is your opinion about that? And if you're using something like whey protein, is there anything you need to be aware of? Yeah, so whey protein is a a very fast-hitting form of protein. It's metabolized quickly compared to the other kinds of protein. And uh, it's particularly useful around exercise, around resistance training is a good time for that to have. It's it's a time-efficient way to get a big whack of protein. 
one of the challenges is that whey protein uh, taken in the quantity sufficient, sufficient quantity often engenders an insulin response. And this is not what you're looking for when you're in ketosis. So there's sort of a trade-off there. Myself, I only mess with whey protein on resistance training days. Uh, I have it with me uh, when I'm resistance training and I finish it as I finish training and then I head for eggs. But, um, you know, I wouldn't have rate whey protein today. It was an office day. It may even knock me out of ketosis or certainly uh, um, get me really close to out if I drank a lot of it. The other thing is the quality of whey protein varies dramatically by vendor. And it's, it's such a uh, huge market. The vendors are all over the place in the quality and the composition mm. of the whey protein. And, you know, like leucine is key. And so if you're not sure about how much leucine is in the whey protein, you can supplement with leucine and the other essential amino acids. Okay. Yeah, good to know. So I guess kind of looking for a, a reputable product and all that, possibly bringing in like the branch chain amino acids or things that will kind of stimulate even more protein synthesis. Yeah. Um, and then being aware of the potential insulin rise. Now I've heard that actually it was in Dr. Ben Bookman's book. He, he kind of explained that if you're on a low carb diet or if you're on a ketogenic diet, then protein is not as insulinogenic as it would be otherwise. True. But do you still find that that at least for you personally that it's it uh, causes issues? Not all with... protein, whey protein in particular, whey protein. Uh, okay. uh, hits me differently than say you know eating eggs. You know, so uh, I get almost no res insulinogenic response to things like eggs, whereas protein, uh, whey protein, um, I see it. I see a response, and I, so I couple it on a training day. Uh, where I'm giving myself a, a little more leeway. Uh, your body will handle carbohydrates better on that day. And um, with branch chain amino acids, th those are good. You want all of the essential amino acids, not just the subset that are the branch chain. So it used to be thought that the branch chain amino acids, the BCAAs, uh, were the way to go, but now it's the EAAs. So you, it turned out there's benefit to all all of the essential amino acids.